Hello, Beauty News family. Welcome, Welcome. to Beauty News Zoom edition number way too many. <laughs> I know. We're back to Zoom, guys. Yeah. Um, sadly, um, as you can tell by our backgrounds, we're in Melbourne, which is a scary place right now. <laughs> it's fucked up. Don't go in there. Don't go there. This is yeah. my suburb. Don't this is what it currently looks like. So, uh, Correct. Uh, we're having a second outbreak, like a second yeah. wave, second wave. Yeah. Oh, my hair's even disappearing. <laughs> You're just going to be a floating head soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're having a second wave. So um, yeah, it's a scary place and um, our backgrounds are reflecting it, but sorry about the audio yeah. quality and shit. We, it is what it is. It's going to be like this for at least another six weeks. Yeah. Fun. Good. Can't time. wait. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the 17th of June edition. We're going to be talking about new yeah. release beauty products and updates. We do have some. Um, and look, there's actually a lot to discuss this week. So I think we should get into it. The first update is from Jeffree Star. He has actually released a piece of shit. Um, yes. Sorry, lip liners. My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, so he's arguably they are a piece of shit. Yeah, well, apparently they were beforehand because they've reformulated them and released them again. Um, so these are uh, irrelevant, but they're called something. <laughs> the Velour lip liners. There we go, Velour lip liners. So twenty six shades to match the iconic Velour liquid lipsticks. Uh, and it's a new formula that's a suede matte finish. It's got a creamier texture and allows for multi-layer application without buildup. Uh, it should be out yep. by the time you're watching this. Which implies that the last ones they couldn't layer. They must have been chunky or something weird. I never yeah. watched any reviews on them, but I had heard no. some of the feedback um, from hearing that this was relaunched that they were pretty trash. Uh, I also yeah. heard a few people say that it's quite funny because historically, and I don't know this because I don't watch Jeffree Star, um, historically he bags out brands that don't get the formula right to begin with. Like he's, yeah, so he trashes them, yet he is now here admitting that his formula was crap and he released it anyway. So um, hypocritical, but that's not a surprise yeah. for Jeffree Star. Um, I think yeah. what is probably, okay, so it's a boring release. They reformulated lip liners. Big fucking deal. Yeah, no one um, gives a shit. No one gives a flying fuck. Um, but what I found most interesting about this release was the backlash that we got for mm -hmm. sharing it on Instagram and in the Beauty News Facebook group. And probably yeah. the backlash we're going to get talking about it here. So yeah. the really interesting thing is like... From the birth of our channel, people were so excited for Jeffree Star releases to the point that I look at Instagram and I know that likes are hidden, but I would look at some other posts that might get like 500 likes. Jeffree Star will get like 10,000 likes. So mm -hmm. we had to talk about his releases because they were in demand. People would, yeah. if we didn't talk about them, like, what do you think of Jeffree Star? What do you think of Jeffree Star? What do you think? It was like the biggest thing is when Re Jeffree Star releases a new collection. Now, all of a sudden, there's been some flip because when we used to talk about his releases and if we were really critical about him or his products, we used to get slayed in the comments. They yeah. were like, you're just fucking haters and you don't like Jeffrey, so you're saying shit things about his products, but his products are great. You're such haters. Now we're getting hate for featuring him. Yeah. And look, a lot of people won't know this, but we used to fucking tear Jeffrey to shreds over his behavior, over his fucking racist, sexist, misogynistic, revolting behavior, which he has been known for since the basically the dawn of time yeah. on the internet. So I think it's uh, very, very interesting to now see that we are the bad guys for doing our job and featuring <laughs> makeup. And, you know, like, it's... It annoys me because the people that have the power to not, you know, make him famous are the people who are paying so much attention to him. If yeah. you guys didn't engage in 
like Jeffree Star Instagram posts, we wouldn't even post them. Correct. There are a lot of brands that we don't post because people aren't don't give a fuck. fucking interested. They don't care. They don't give a shit. They don't comment. They don't like. Like it gets no no coverage. So we don't put the effort into creating the posts. The posts don't just happen like that. Like yeah. we're putting in time and effort to do them, taking time out of our day to post about something that people don't give a fuck about. Most people liked his releases and would say positive yes. things. And then maybe a third would be like bagging time, him out. Now that strange. now there's been a shift. So now, yes. you know, if, if you guys don't want us to talk about Jeffree Star, let his brand die. Don't buy his crap. Don't pay his money. Like Morphe has has dropped him from yeah. the website and the stores. How about that? Separated ways with Jeffree Star. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think if if people don't want him to be a multi-millionaire with um like a hugely successful makeup brand, let it die. Go and then we won't have to talk about it. Yeah. I would happily not talk about Jeffree Star. Yeah. He fucking but irritates me. I agree. Can I also say one thing though, is that we were accused a lot of um, sort of banning other brands, but not Jeffree Star. And people mm. were like, how can you still talk about Jeffree Star, but you don't talk about Kat Von D or Fenty? We talk about Kat Von D, we talk about Fenty. If it's a makeup brand and it's a, a big release, we talk about anything and everything, no matter how we feel about it. So that's always been the case. and That will always be the case. So kill his brand and then we won't have to worry about it. And if you feel like you can make a claim that we haven't talked about Kat Von D or Fenty, um, I think you need to get your facts straight because we talk about all of their releases. You're not here enough, hun. So you can take a seat. That's true. Good point. Good point. All right, moving on from that little rant. Uh, had our yes. pants on. Uh, let's talk about Kim Chi Chic uh, Beauty. We saw last week that they're doing a collaboration with Naomi Smalls called Two Queens in One Desert. And um, we suspected it was a palette, um, but now we've seen the reveal. Now, it hasn't come out yet, but I believe it's coming out later this week, I believe. Um, so we've got the Mad Maxine um suit yourself does that make sense suit yourself s double o t t suit what does that even mean i think it's meant to be suit yourself but it's i don't know i don't know I, either. I don't know but it's an eyeshadow palette it's got 24 vibrant shades um and it is going to be 30 us dollars now what is this looks like a mishmash of craziness in the pack on the packaging and everything you can see uh they, they're really emphasizing green eyeshadow but realistically mm. there's if you're lucky there's four green eyeshadows in this it's I mainly like so. oranges yeah you could argue that there's more orange shades in there than green yeah shit yeah i count possibly one two three <laughs> four five six seven five. maybe seven yeah maybe five seven. at the very least yeah but what they've done, which is the reason why this looks so haphazard and weird, is that if you turn it to the side, you can see that it's got uh, two columns that clearly suits Naomi. Um, yeah. And they've got two uh, columns that Kim Chi has picked out. So yeah. together they look really, really mishmashed. But if you look at them down in the columns, you're like, okay, I see there is some colour story going on. It's just mm. laid on top of each other. It looks really strange. I would have yeah. just liked Naomi's colour story. Look, I don't really vibe with either of them because I don't like blue and green and there's blue and green all over it. Yeah, I like the green, but I yeah, I think the random pop of blue and pink and stuff, it, it's a bit weird. But there there you go if you're a fan of either one of them that might be something you want to get your teeth into also there's like three four shimmers everything else looks pretty matte. much matte which i think is yeah. a bit limiting there are two color stories it just looks a bit strange i would have liked to see two individual sort of um mini palettes so you can pick yeah. one 
Then we have the Sun Kissed in June Blush and Highlight Palette. So this is 19 US dollars. And again, um, you can see that there is a kimchi side and a Naomi Small side. So the kimchi side is the pink blush and a champagne highlighter. And then we have a more peachy nude blush and a cooler toned champagne highlighter. So slightly more pink toned. So again, they've just picked you know, one of each and put them together. And then there's the No Sparkle Shaming Cream Shadow Duo. So this is US $19. This contains two shades of cream eyeshadow. There's Pink Shower and Femme Top. So again, it looks like they've picked one each, which they haven't even used in the campaign. No. <laughs> I feel like this image represents the sort of collection they like in theory it works it but if you pick the, the colors together they just don't they don't really work together it would have been cool to have like a pack with an eyeshadow palette the blush duo and the like eyeshadow cream the naomi pack and the kimchi pack would have been yeah, cool. yeah. that probably would have been more appropriate because when you put them together it's just a bit like i don't know like, yeah it's, it's like a bit weird a, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really get it. It's a bit of nothing for me. Like, yeah. it, there's not really any cohesion to it. I think the eyeshadow palette, to be fair, would be really good for drag queens. So I give them that. Yeah, probably. If that's their yeah. audience. They're smashing that out of the park. Um, but yeah, I think it's a little bit haphazard. All right, let's update um, the Urban Decay Lash Freak Mascara that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. So this is available now at QVC, it's 25 US dollars, um, or you can get a duo of them for 34.75. Cause yeah, that's what you want to do. Two mascaras. Yeah. Buy two mascaras that you've never tried before. Good idea. <laughs> so they're saying it's an intensely volumizing mascara with an asymmetrical brush that lengthens, lifts and curls lashes for a dramatic wide eyed look. It's ultra pigmented flake proof mascara that creates volume and visible length for the boldest lashes. Uh, the brush is designed to load every eyelash with the max amount of formula for extreme volume and definition. The tip defines and separates even the tiniest of individual lashes while the curl curved side adds lift at the lash root yeah this doesn't explain what we were asking last time when we saw this which is yeah. how does that yellow part the flat part stay clean it can't possibly unless it somehow scrapes on a mechanism on the packaging when it comes out yeah there would still be some product on yeah. it it won't look but it as wouldn't cool be as, as clean as what they're showing yeah but in theory, I like the shape of this. And I, I would try this if I was in the market for a new mascara because I like something that has a lot of volume. I like that it's got the spike on the top so you can separate any chunky bits and really yeah. sort of define little inner corner areas and lower lash line and whatnot. And I also yeah. like that it's got the flat side because often I'm finding myself doing these ones with my lashes because oh, if yeah. I'm like poking down, I try to like, while the mascara is wet... Up. I try yeah. to lift them up. So it gives you a tool to do that. So I think it's a cool yeah. design. Yeah. It's just whether the formula goes along with it. I mean, I feel like these lashes look a bit spidery, which isn't really yeah. what I am. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with this one personally, but I know that some people like that look and it definitely is like lengthening the lashes for sure. Yeah, I don't mind a bit of spideriness because I find that my lashes in general always look spidery if I'm not wearing liner and these yeah. people aren't really wearing much liner. So I feel like this is sort of typical of how my lashes go anyway. Mm -hmm. So but with liner, I can imagine these looking really beautiful. Yeah. Like that third one down or the fourth one down, those lashes would look bomb with some like liner. Yes. All right. We have a lot of influencer related stuffs so yep. we're just gonna start at the start jackie Ina, she is um or she started a brand it's look i don't know how to how this is pronounced i assume it's forever um or it's forever <laughs> i don't know 
I don't know. Yeah, like, uh, um, yeah I, I would presume it's forever as well, but I, yeah, it, yeah. It, it looks very strange. I'm just going to call it forever mood. Um, and it looks like um, she's most likely going to be releasing candles. Um, there are trademarks for candles, also fragrance, which is most likely going to be within that same family. Um, she's not going to release unscented candles. That would be no. boring and weird. Um, and she <laughs> does also have a trademark for clothing. Um, so maybe she's going to be releasing some sort of lifestyle type brand rather than strictly beauty. Yeah. So she did say that it's not makeup. And yeah. she did also show herself... Um, with a lighter so mm -hmm. something like you presume it's going to be either a candle a wax melt um an essential oil that maybe you use in a diffuser type thing yeah. uh, and she's also got a headband thing i'm thinking maybe clothing could be yeah. headband or like loungewear or something i feel like forever mood or creating some mood it makes yeah. sense to have those sort of items so that's definitely the first thing we've seen. It's not going to be something we're going to keep talking about the releases in beauty news, but we will no. update you on what it is when we find out, and then we'll probably lay it to rest. Yeah. Um, but the next thing, uh, we've seen another influencer launching a brand, mm. and this is uh, Patrick Starr. So ah. he's launching a brand called One Size. Yes. Um, and this is interesting. So we don't know too much about it except that it's coming soon soon to Sephora mm -hmm. um, and yeah it is supposed to be like one size fits all which yeah makeup isn't but I I get if we don't take it too literally it's more like it's for everyone all colors all creeds all of it one I size. hope that's what it means because I'm I'm confused by it because it can go in my in my head it can go either way. Makeup can either be one size, like a red lip. Yeah. Theoretically, anyone can wear it. Yeah. One size fits all. Yeah. But then again, base products. No, you absolutely no. Not. One size does not. You have different skin types, skin tones, skinny shoes like you can't have one product or even one range that suits everyone. So yeah. it's sort of interesting. I'm curious to see where this is going to go. This is actually developed by a luxury brand partners, which is a company that owns things like um, Smith and Colt nail polish and a few mm -hmm. other brands that are stocked in Sephora. So this sort of makes sense why it's stocked in Sephora um, but I, so I feel like it's going to be something on a big scale. It's not like a Manny MUA starting, um, Luna beauty or, you know, influencers starting their own brand. This is actually mm -hmm. a company coming to him wanting to collaborate, to make like a legitimate, almost like a Fenty or a Mark Jacob. So yeah. I think this is going to be yeah. something big. I just think it's such a clunky name. It sounds like something that should be designed for like a clothing company that, that like sells scarves and moo or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, like it's, yeah. A, it's such a weird name for a makeup brand in it my opinion. It makes me think of One Piece. Like yeah. I can't even, that's all I think of. I'm like anime. Yeah. <laughs> I will say that I am actually really excited to see what he's going to release. Yeah, I don't reckon it's going to be shit. Looking at his map nah. collections from the other, like, uh, it wasn't last year, it was the year before, his capture yeah. collections throughout the year with Mac, I think he's really good at bringing colour stories together. Um, Absolutely. So I'm, re I'm curious to see where this go goes. I reckon it's, look, he could just release something for the sake of releasing something, but I don't think... I don't think he will. Packing, he, he will yeah. do that. I think he's going yeah. to come out with something that is going to be newsworthy. So I reckon, I reckon I'm, I'm actually really excited to see what he comes up with. I think it's going to be interesting. Like you said, if his Mac collections are anything to go by, I'm ready. Um, okay. We have, is that the last brand release? Let me just yes. confirm. All right. Cool. We have two collabs. Yes. So the first one 
is um, Jen from Jen Loves Reviews and Ofra. They are releasing three Transformer liquid lipsticks. So the shades are uh, Reimagine, which brings depth and neutralizes, Revive, lightens and brightens, and Refine makes colors closer to skin tone and more wearable. And they're, they're not my quotes, they're their quotes. Um, yeah. <laughs> she, um, she says that the colors are universal to all skin tones and lip products. So any brand, formula, whatever. Trio is 50 US dollars and you can buy the individual shades for $20 each. And there's a pre-sale on the 20th of July with it launching on the 29th. And last bit of information, um, on the 29th launch day, if you order from the Ofra website, you will get a mystery shade of liquid lipstick uh, because it is International Lipstick Day and they are giving away lipsticks. Yeah, and the mystery shade is not like a new secret shade. They're just no, no, no. putting a random shade in your Just a order. random, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, I watched her release video and um, at the start of the video, she is showing um, the Periscope videos where she's like doing her makeup in the morning and um, she likes to mix lipsticks a lot to get her perfect shade. Um, and that's essentially why she created this trio to yep. um, essentially uh, help you to like make a lipstick more you if you bought a lipstick that you don't like or if you want to change up the colour. Personally, I'm not into this. Um, I don't... It's personal for me because I, if I have a lipstick product or a makeup product, that I don't like, I'm more inclined to just get rid of it. Um, and I would have preferred to see her just release like her three of her perfect lip shades in like light, medium and deep. Um, and also at the end of the video, and this is why I don't like layering and mixing lip products on the lip, because at the end of the video, I'm pretty sure it got to the point where she had all three of these shades over another lipstick. That's four layers of lip products. They're not just being like mixed on a, a plate and then applied once you've got the right color. They're, it's just layer after layer. And I'm not about the like chunky gunky lips. It's yuck. Yeah, look, I agree with you. I sort of, look, I'm gonna say positive things first and then I'm gonna get to why I, I don't like this idea. And essentially, I think it's one of those situations where it's good in theory, but bad in practice. Um, yeah. I think, you know, if she's known for mixing lip colours, then, you know, it is... The, okay, positives. We're talking about positives. If yeah. she's known for mixing lip colours, this is really on brand for her. And her fans yes, will, is. And like, be, be into this because it's what she does. And if she's inspiring people to do similar things, then... Yeah. You know, it makes sense. It also and seems like she... Say, yeah, sorry, keep sorry. going. I just want to say, like, at the start of her video, she really got that point across. Yeah. Like, I, after watching that, I, that... I thought I was watching the wrong video. I'm like, well, is this a compilation of her getting ready? <laughs> like, I was like, is this the review? Did I click on the right thing? <laughs> What's happening? But she really gets the point across as to why she chose to do this. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, on, it's on brand for for her, as, yep. as she points out. Um, and I also think that this she thought of the colours, uh, it seems like she did a lot of testing when it came to the colours. So she yeah. knew what she wanted and she um, found colours that she demonstrates later in the video, works with most other colours uh, to deepen or lighten or to neutralise or not neutral, make a more nude, I suppose, mute, yeah. mute down. So I think, you know, there was a lot of thought that was, Put into this and if you're the type of person that wants to get really sort of um, DIY and mixing with lipsticks and stuff this could be something that really intrigues you so those mm -hmm. are the 
pros in my opinion. But the more I think about it, the more cons come up for me. Firstly, if you're the type of person that likes to mix lip colors, I think a lip palette is better mm -hmm. because you get the ability to tweak the undertones and the depth of the color. And the fact that these were three nudes that just make your lipsticks more nude, um, I think really limits your tweakability of lipsticks. Um, but what it comes down to as well, she talks about being able to mix it with any lip product, whether it's a liquid lipstick, a bullet lipstick, a lip gloss, but in reality, yeah, they can mix together, but it changes the formula of what you're putting it on. If you've got a beautiful yeah. sheer lipstick, a lip gloss, and you're like, I just want to make it a little bit lighter, you're yeah. adding matteness and opacity to your lip product. So it is actually potentially ruining the effect that you want. So I don't actually think it is as universal universal as she's claiming it is. But I do agree with you in a sense that I would have liked to have, if she's had so many issues creating her perfect lip color, it makes more sense for her to take this opportunity to create her perfect lip color instead yeah. of creating three products that you wouldn't use individually. You have to layer or mix because yeah. I'm not about the life where I'm going to use three lipsticks to tweak a lipstick I already own. It's too nah. much maintenance. If you need to touch up during the day, can you imagine going to the bathroom in a restaurant no. or your office uh -huh. and having to like put no. different colors of lip products on just to match the color? No. To me, it, it, it seems like a lot of work. So yeah, I would have liked to have seen her create her perfect colors and seen what they are um, and bring yeah. those out to the world. And they're like the gen colors, but yeah. also these colors aren't to unique. That too. Because can I just say, at this point, I don't know what her favorite lip colors are. I don't know. I have no idea. But I think ultimately what was a nail in the coffin for me is when I saw her do a montage at the end where she's trying it with a bunch of different colors. And for yeah. me, at the end, I'm like, you've ruined all those lip colors. So this and lip color is one that she uh, tweaked. It's like uh, the Sigma... Uh, infinity point, oh, yes. the red one. They're amazing. And they're beautiful. And it's such a nice formula and such a beautiful color. And when she tweaked it, I was like, you're ruining the, A, the formula and you're not making the color any better. And if you really wanted a nudie red or a dark red, go buy a dark red. What kind of person yeah, is I buying agree. a bright red and being like, I don't like red. So I'm going to try to make it as nude as possible. The only time I use multiple lip colors to create a lip look is if I'm doing an ombre lip deeper on the outside, lighter on the inside, and that's it. Or if I'm using a lipstick and putting a lip gloss over the top. But yeah. otherwise, I ain't trying to tweak no colour because if my lipstick is not basically going to manage itself throughout the day or, like, reapplying it isn't going to be simple as hell and basically without the need of a mirror, it's not happening. Like, it it's you gotta go you can't stay but i mean she's done it and like we said she clearly did put in a lot of research into the shades for color adjusting um and she's excited and it's good to first collab so good luck to her and i know you know people will support her they will buy it yeah and, the, and, and, and if, that, if this is it. your sort of if this inspires you to play around Absolutely. with lipstick Totally check it out. Uh, I think 50 yeah. bucks is probably a bit steep for something that you can't, well, you can wear it straight on your lips, but it's yeah. not designed for that. It's not designed to be flattering as its standalone color. Um, but I also would say that if this inspires you and you don't have the 50 bucks to spend on three new tweaking lip products, look in your collection. You can always mix yeah, them. Yeah, look in your stash. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. this is just a basic thing that a lot of people can do and they have the opportunity to do with their own collection. You don't need to buy more stuff to try this, if that makes yeah. sense. All right. Our last collaboration is Pure and Christy from Raw Beauty Christy. So what we have here is a palette and two sets of lashes. The palette is an 18 pan palette and it is double sided. So um, if you watch beauty news regularly and you've been watching us for years, you'll know Shane XO did something yeah. similar to this. You've got- With, um, with BH Cosmetics, yeah? Did they? I think I it was remember. with BH Cosmetics. Oh yes, sorry, yes, 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 yes. I thought you said was and BH Cosmetics, yeah. Um, 
So on one side, you've got basically a colorful side and the other side is wearable. Um, and each palette contains uh, eight matte shades and one sort of uh, complementary yeah. shimmer that will work with all of the shades in the palette. Yeah, I think this is an interesting idea. And again, I'm going to say that it's probably good in theory, not so great in practice. With that Shanexo BH Cosmetics one, one thing that I heard as the main negative feedback was the flipping over each side is kind of annoying. I just feel like the flipping over in practice isn't the best because chances are you're going to want to use some color and then some nude in one look. But I do like that she's gone colorful and she's also gone neutral um, in the collaboration and that and, and what they sort of do in their marketing is show sort of two sides to her the colorful side yeah. and the sort of neutral wearable side which i think is on brand for her she does do some really colorful looks and then yeah, sometimes she does. Does some really nude looks so this yeah. sort of makes sense i think also the colors she chose are pretty good like it's pretty much a rainbow palette but a little bit more wearable than like a vibrant rainbow palette um, mm. because there are some sort of like more more I think look there's like a teal instead of a bright green um, you know yeah. and they really emphasize maybe the warm tones that are a little bit more easy to wear so I think that's really smart um, so I do like the look of this it's just that sort of flip over that really annoys me and personally yeah. I love shimmer so having we, two we shimmers out more. of all shades yeah yeah it's not enough shimmer for me yeah, that's fair. She did address uh, that the palette, like the flipping of the palette, she was like, it's probably going to be annoying, but she was like, it's more of a priority to me to have um, it be compact, essentially, um, which, you know, I'm all here for compact eyeshadow palettes. I've been saying it for ages. Um, but can I but, ask you a question, Hayley? Yeah. Two thin palettes stacked that you can use individually. Look, does it take up any more room than if you stack them together no, and it open one like that? And no, I like wouldn't that. buy this anyway. <laughs> no. Like, it, and it doesn't. If they're thin palettes, it, it makes no difference, you know. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't buy this. I, it's, not, it's not me. It's just not me. No. The, the nude side, I really, really like. I wouldn't even use the colourful side, although I look like I'm wearing colourful eyeshadow today. But it's just, it's... Like I've got it in spades. I've got so many and I never wear them. I do really like her neutral side. I think it's beautiful. I think it's a little bit of a play on um, like the neutral palettes that we've been seeing lately. It's mm. like, it's just a little bit fresh and I like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. like you said, I like a bit more shimmer as well. Yeah. Yeah. I like a, like a, I sort of like a 50, 50 split with shimmer, but um, maybe like, 40 60 split a little yeah. bit more matte it doesn't bother me but I, one shimmer to me is very limiting but um when one thing that you mentioned i i wanted to sort of reflect on as well since you said you like the neutral side but you don't like the colorful side one yeah. thing i don't think is super wise about this is that you can't buy them separately because yeah. I find that you'll get a lot of people that love nudes and then you get a lot of people that love shimmers. Oh, not shimmers, sorry, colours. Colours, yeah. You don't often get people that want both. Yeah. Like, there are a lot of makeup lovers that do play with both, but like you, I would... I'm like, the, the neutral side looks really interesting, mm -hmm. but then you'll find people like... I don't know, I think of friend, YouTube friends like Annette or Angie, yep. they would be like, I'm not going to use the nude side, <laughs> yes. I want the colourful side. Right. So yeah. I feel like it would have been smarter to have sort of compact little palettes and you can buy them in a pack together or buy them separately. And I yeah. don't think, even if they magnetically stuck together, yeah, you know, that. that's a way to keep them compact. But I think the fact that they're like, this just doesn't appeal yeah. to me. Yeah. That sort of flap thing. But I don't, yeah, it's not... Yeah. That's very fair. functional. But well, if I had I, to choose between Jen's or Christie's, I would buy Christie's. Christie's. Yeah. yeah. If I had to buy one, get some I would buy it. Christie's. It's, um, oh, don't even start me, Ikea. I made everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. And before we move on, um, like I said, there are two sets of lashes. Um, they both look very, a lot. Dramatic. Much, that's the word I'm thinking. Dramatic. They do look very dramatic. But I know that um, Christy 
loves lashes. Uh, she loves pure. So there you go. I think it's, um, it's very fitting. Okay, um, we have something interesting here from Becca. This is the Zero Collection. Um, so it's a collection that is free from pigment. Instead, it utilizes the brand's clear light blur technology. Ooh. Um, there's a no pigment virtual foundation. So this is a silicon free, um, full of glycerin and hyaluronic acid to instantly hydrate parched pores. Uh, it's a no pigment virtual foundation that is a tall glass of cool water for your skin. It instantly cools skin on contact while controlling the controlling oil production. So this has a matte finish um, and it controls oil. It literally looks like a mattifying primer. It does. And, it, and I think, Look, I think it's probably similar to a mat. Mm, no, I think it looks like it has the effect of a mattifying primer. Mm. It actually looks like the effect of a silicon primer, but without the well, silicon. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think this, look, you could probably achieve this effect with a bit of translucent powder, to be real. Um, yeah. But I do think it's an interesting concept because it does have skincare ingredients. So if mm. you are the kind of person that has pretty flawless skin, Sadly, not me. Um, and you can get away with um, not needing any coverage. You just need to have that oil control blurred finish. I think this is an mm. interesting product. I, had, I don't think I've seen anything quite like this, again, that isn't full of silicon. Um, so yeah. I think it, it's probably good for the Becca range because originally Becca was known for that sort of fresh skin um, minimal makeup sort of vibe. So this is sort of going mm -hmm. back to Becca's beginnings. Um, yeah. But again, I look at this and I'm like, I don't really see any necessary benefit to this. Like a lot of people want dewiness. So I feel like you can just yeah. look at these photos and some people will be like, oh, I, I, I like the, the sort of shiny side. The dewy more. side, yeah. Yeah, so I don't actually think also, it does enough for it to be something that I would reach for but i can see that there is a market for this they um right after they say it has a transparent matte finish they say the complexion balancing formula helps you to embrace your natural complexion while also helping you achieve that comfortable dewy glass skin finish like that's pun. contradictory yeah i don't um and then what's also interesting, they've got a no pigment highlighter for the face and lip, which is essentially um, lip gloss. a lip gloss or a multi-purpose gloss product to add that gloss back in. So you take away the shine and then you add it back in. <laughs> oh, shit. Look, if you guys want it, it is coming soon to Becca Cosmetics. All right, we've got some new products from Charlotte Tilbury. They've launched their new Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow. So this is a cream blush and lip tint, which will go perfectly over your Becca, whatever it called, no pigment virtual foundation. There you go. You can wear them it together. Would, yeah. Anyway, it's just a cream product, multi-purpose cream product. It comes in two shades, Color of Passions, which is a deep blushing berry pink, and Colour of Dreams, which is a, ro a warm rosebud pink. So they're both pinks. Hooray. Um, and they're now available at Charlotte Tilbury for £30 each. We have something here from e.l.f. So this is an expansion to their liquid glitter eyeshadow range and their sheer slick lipsticks. Oh, I want their lipsticks. Um, so we've got three shades of the liquid Glitter eyeshadows, these are five US dollars each. You've got Mermaid Shimmy, Purple Rain, and Pinky Swear. So they're green, purple, and pink. And then you've got uh, two shades of Sheer Slick Lipsticks. These are five US dollars each. You've got Golden Pear, which is an absolutely beautiful nude, and Black Cherry, which is um, basically a black cherry shade. Can we also mention just really briefly that they've just uh, released the Cleansing Cloud? which right. um, if you look at this at a distance it looks like face halo um, oh, and i'm sure face shit. halo are talking to their lawyers as we speak oh, um, wait a minute I'm, I'm jumping on instagram to have a look at this yeah so this is Ew. pretty much um 
it's a fiber tech makeup remover pad. Oh. Um, so it's pretty much a microfiber circular pad that, um, that is four dollars. You're only supposed to use water on it. No cleansing products. You don't need to use it anyway. It's reusable. It's supposed to be soft on the skin. Um, oh and it is God. essentially a makeup removing like cloth that is so much cheaper than Face Halo, but also looks almost identical, except that it Even says Elf on it. Even with a little tag on it. Yep. Yep. But Ooh. from a distance, like if I showed you guys this from a distance, you'd be like, Face halo. face halo. So I reckon face halo are going to be furious at Elf. Yeah. But if you didn't want to try face halo because it was way too expensive, because they are, you get a pack mm -hmm. of three though. And you get like, a pack of three. They last you forever. They're yeah. not that expensive. They're, no, they're like, like they're like ten Australian dollars each. So these are yeah. technically only a couple bucks cheaper, but still, there you go. That's something else from yeah. Elf. You mentioned that you wanted those lip products. I don't yes. want those because the next thing is glorious. I this want from M Cosmetics, and this I looks want this so bad. A hundred times better than the Elf ones. So these yeah. are uh, it's a new shade of their lip cushion in Venetian rose. So it's a vintage road shade, road mm. Mm, rose shade that luminizes your lips with a sheer touch of color. It's already launched, and it is this beautiful, soft, cool toned. Moby nude and it just this is if i had to pick one thing from the episode that i want it's this yeah it i looks agree so gorgeous on the lips on the models even like the deeper skin tone it's, it's still okay it's, it's it's light but it still looks it's gorgeous smooth. it's smooth it. it's not like yep. bunching up or like settling weird it looks gorgeous I wonder how much shipping is from the States because I want it. <laughs> it's, I think it's pretty expensive, but maybe if we can um, pull our resources together, we can share shipping. Might and, have to. And if there's different shades, I'm buying a couple because they look so gorgeous. Yeah. But you look at the difference between these lip swatches and the e.l.f. ones, and this just looks oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. it makes your lips just... You can, you can tell that e.l.f.'s $5 or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So this is just, yeah, new uh, shade extension, but what a shade gorgeous absolutely gorgeous okay the next thing we have is from joey cosmetics it's called the champagne and macarons collection um so it's inspired by marie antoinette and the femininity of the rococo era um it consists of two face palettes they're 34 us dollars each we've got sweet cheeks and cheeky crush so these are four pan palettes and it would appear that they have a bronzer in them and two blushes along with a highlighter. Then yeah, and one's like a lighter toned and one's a deeper tone. Yes. Then we have eyeshadow trio set. Okay. This is $42. Wait. Are they are they selling them all as a set? Is it a set yep. of 42? Or are they 42 yep. each? No, the thing that, that, that people are raising eyebrows over, and I totally understand this, is they've got four eyeshadow trios. Yes. You're going to sell them in a set. Why not just have it as a palette? Yeah, I don't understand. I, I don't get it. And so a anyway. lot of people are saying that, that one of these trios sort of vibes with them, but they don't want the other ones. So it's sort of... And the colours aren't universal colors that everyone will like there's a frosty one with like a teal there's like a periwinkle blue sort of stormy blue trio and then you have more of a nude trio and then like a smoky cool tone dark trio yeah most people won't wear all these color stories no i wouldn't wear so any a very of strange one they should have sold these individually um because i like sort of maybe two of them mm -hmm. but i buy a four pack of them no no sense. way no no way um it's then weird. there's the essential lip enhancer shine balms or shine balm in shimmering champagne so this is it's like a clear balm with a little bit of shimmer in it uh there's it does a shimmer look pretty swatched pardon it does it looks does pretty it? swatched yeah. yeah there's a shimmer lip gloss in pearl and then the sheer pigment lip glosses in Parisian and Feminist. And I've got to say, yeah. 
I don't know which one's which, but the darker of those glosses. Gorgeous. I want it. The, the mauvey nude. Yeah. Yeah. Really pretty. yeah. All right. Next thing we've seen a new mascara from Pat McGrath. So this is the dark star mascara. So it's a mascara week, sort of, kind of. Uh, instantly mm. volumizing f uh, formulation delivers intergalactic glamour, anti-gravity lift and a luxurious length with maximum impact and control. It's a pitch black micro fine cream pigment that teleports eyes layering each lash with lavish volume and exa exaggerated <laughs> extraterrestrial effects. Do you know what's exa mm. exaggerated? They're goddamn clean. It it's bullshit. Um, oh, yeah. So pretty much it's a mascara. They've had a mascara before, but this is just another one. Uh, again, it's launching 14th of July and it's 30 US dollars each. Um, mm. The marketing photos make it look divine, but yeah. I feel like that you'll get that effect if you have divine lashes to begin with. And Photoshop. Yep, that too. Uh, the next thing we have is a Wonder Woman 1984 collection from Revlon. So this consists of a face and eye palette. This is $14.99. Um, it is how many shades? 10 shades. And it's laid out very interestingly. Why, why are the two larger shades shimmer and look? It looks like they could be face highlighters, but they don't really say that that's oh, what it's Well, it does for. say face and eye palette. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, it does. Oh, so no, it'd, be, it'd, be two, it'd be two quads and two highlighters. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, okay, good, good. Um, then there's a super lustrous lipstick. These are $8.49 each, and they come in six shades. Essentially, you've got a pretty good range of colours here, though. You've got a rosy mm. nude, a bright pink, a sort of coppery shimmer shade, which I'm not down for, but you no. do you. Um, an orange toned red, a blue toned red, and then a purpley shade. So it's a pretty good variety of colours. Oh, right, and of colors. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. When it comes, yeah. For, for a collection of six, besides mm. the fact there's not many nudes, but you sort of think Wonder Woman, you think of sort of colours anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think this is a decent colour range. Yeah. Uh, then we've got the Color Stay Glaze Stick. These are seven ninety nine each. You've got Gilt and Sapphire. So Gilt is um, a really pretty sort of bronzy gold, and Gilt seems to be like a turquoise, oceany blue. Both really pretty colors. There's yeah. also the Warrior Glitter Lip Color. This is in the yeah. shades Gear Up and Fight for It. To be fair, I'm not into glittery lip products, but if you're going to do glittery lips, these are nice colours. These are good colours for it. Yeah, yeah, a dark berry purple and also a blue toned red. So those tend to be more flattering because you get and that sort of really glossy effect, not that sort of frosty, weird nude effect that or yeah. bronzy sort of effect. So look, I'll forgive them. They've picked some decent colours. They have. There's also the Ultra HD Matte Lip Mousse, $9.99 each. You've got Scorpion Red and Earthy. These are also pretty good colours. Yeah. To be fair. Would wear both of these if I liked the formula. Yes, that's fair. Uh, the last lip products we've got are the Kiss Melting Shine Lipsticks. These are $12.99 each, and they come in the shades Courageous and Hot Spirited. So um, you've got like a sort of bright corally pink and then a red. And there's a liquid armor glow pot in golden lasso for $11.99. This is like a pot of like liquid highlighter. There's a transforming effects eye powder for $9.99. This is a double-ended powder thing. And yeah, it's got, a, a it's got two sponge applicators and then in the lids, there's like a loose pigment. So yeah. we saw these kind of things from um, Urban Decay, I think it was yep. last year and or earlier this year. And they had like the liquid liner on one side and then the pigment on the other side. Whereas this is just a double-ended pigment. They yep. do show it being applied over a liquid liner, but you don't doesn't come with a liquid liner. No, no. Uh, and the last thing is a compact mirror for six ninety nine, yep. and it's just got uh, the Wonder Woman logo on it. It's all available now at uh, the US Revlon website. 
Look, I'm going to have to say the logos on this are pretty minimal. So if you really want something that's super, super branded, this might be yeah. disappointing. But at yeah. the same time, like it makes sense because Gal Gadot is um, the one of the faces of Revlon. So it makes sense mm -hmm. that they've got this collab. Like I'm like, okay, yes. when I heard about this, I'm like, oh yeah, it's on brand. It makes sense. Yeah, um, makes sense. Yeah, and the thing I probably like the least is the eyeshadow and face palette because the colors I'm like I don't I don't want to use them, but the yeah. lip products and even the sort I of like um, the lip stick, products. yeah, and the stick eyeshadows like they 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 all look decent. I I, I wouldn't think it's, um quite a good collection. I'm I'm not a yeah. fan of the the eyeshadow palette, um, but when it comes to all of the lip products. Like you said, the eye crayons, not really into that double-ended eyeshadow fucking shit. But I think they chose smart colours. They're pretty. Yeah. All right, okay, the last thing. The last thing. Yes. Is. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> this is what, what they do. Zoom is hard because you start I talking know. and then you hear the other person talk and then you're like, wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bear with us, guys. But the last thing is from Winky Lux. They've mm -hmm. launched their s'mores collection. Yeah. Um, so there are two limited edition products, I believe. Uh, the s'mores face palette, which is 16 US dollars. Yeah. Um, and pretty much this contains two shimmery highlighters and one matte contour shade. Uh, and it's got a graham cracker scent, which sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. But you can also use this on your face, eyes, and body if you wanted to. So there's like right. a white highlighter, a gold mm -hmm. highlighter, and then a bronzer. Um, and it's stacked like it, it like a s'more, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and then they also have um, the s'mores balm, which is more expensive. What the fuck? It's I don't eighteen get that. US dollars. Why is a balm more expensive than a face product? Like, I don't understand. Um, but this is a tri-coloured balm that helps hydrate and condition the lips for a smooth, uh, supple pout, leaving behind a sheer nude tint. Um, and it's got a creamy finish and a marshmallow scent, which sounds it delicious. Sounds so good, doesn't it? Yeah. So again, this looks like it's a, th a three-colour lip balm, but when you mm. mix them together, it creates sort of like a pinky nude colour, yeah. quite a sheer colour. Um, and so the cut, like the, the trio color is just a gimmick, which I'm not, I'm not against if you want to, if it wants, if you want it to make it look cool, but it gives a good effect, I'm yeah. all for, but the yeah. scents sound awesome. The scents do sound awesome. I'm not digging that palette. No. Uh, nah. Yeah. Look, I like nah. the concept of it, but I think, um, I think the problem with it is if you have two highlighters and one's a frosty, frosty, on frosty white. I don't know. Why do they have flowers on them? They got flowers with little small crackers on them though. Oh, okay. They do that a lot. Like they had the coffee palettes um, and like, I think chocolate things. And they had like the floral design with the um, like coffee cups and stuff yeah. on it. So it's yeah. carrying out that theme. It looks a bit weird though. Yes. But I think, I think the problem with the, the palette, I don't mind the highlighter and bronzer concept. But I yeah. think if you, if you really vibe with that, like if you look at the swatch of that white highlighter, it looks like a matte white eyeshadow. I'm sure in it person it looks a lot nice. nicer, but it looks very, yeah. very, very chalky. If you vibe with that, you're not going to use the bronzy gold and vice versa. So I feel exactly. like unless you're going to mix them together, um, you're alienating, like you're really strictly only going to use two thirds of the palette. Yeah, I, I, I don't dig the palette. I don't really understand it. It's not, like you said, it's, if you can use one part of it, you probably can't use the other parts, vice versa. Not into it. It doesn't look appealing. I like the idea of the scent, but I think the lip product is a winner in this uh, particular release. All right, so that is everything. Yep. We did it. We survived. Uh, we, need, Zoom. we need a VIP we, we and an emoji. We do need both of those. It's time to dedicate this week's episode to a Beauty News VIP, and this week's VIP is Metal Monkey 27. Thank you, Metal Monkey, for supporting Beauty News. And thank you to everyone who supports Beauty News in whichever way you choose to do it. Kat, what is our emoji? This thing. To celebrate. 
<laughs> celebrate. We to are celebrate celebrating. all the brand collabs and the influencers or content creators that yes. are doing their thing, even if we're negative and we're saying that we wouldn't buy it. <laughs> Um, we're still, we're still happy for we them. We still congratulate them for pursuing their dreams and creating Absolutely. products. So, all right, guys, that's it for us this week. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next one. And sorry about the Zoom quality; it is what it is. <laughs> <It's> so bad, <laughs> so bad that Bye it's guys. good. Bye. Oh, I'm crying a lot. Can you hear that a lot? I can. <laughs>